Alright, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to my thoughts on Metal Gear Solid Peace Walker HD for the Xbox 360. Alright, so, little things before first. Alright, so, I'm a huge Metal Gear fan. I've, I love Metal Gear. It's amazing. But no, seriously though, I love Metal Gear. I've played all of them except for maybe... I, I mean, I've played the NES one, but I never finished it. And I never played the original MSX one, so... I've I've played everything aside from those, but that said, uh, I guess we can get started. All right, so Peace Walker. It took me about, I wanna say at least anywhere from 20 to 30 hours. It was in between there. Um, that was eh, I was doing some side content, but I was also trying to focus mainly on the story. But the um. The, the side does actually the side missions actually do affect the story missions a little bit so it's kinda cool they do that but let's get started with story alright so Peace Walker takes place in the uh, I believe the 1974 73 around there it takes place 10 years after Metal Gear Solid 3 um, you're still running around as Big Boss and uh, it, it takes place in Central America for the most part aside from when you're on your oil rig which is still in Central America but um, it takes place in, like, Puerto Rico or whatever, Costa Rico and all those places down there, and, um, essentially Big Boss runs a, uh, a mercenary group now, it's, uh, what is it called, it's called, like, Soldiers Without Borders or something like that, um, pretty much everybody who's in this, this merc group left their countries to better the world or whatever, so, Snake along with his, uh, lieutenant, Kazuhira, also known as Miller. Um, introduced in Metal Gear Solid 1, so we all know who he is now. Pretty cool. Um, but yeah, basically he, he takes over the role of Atakan, I guess you could say. He's like your, your, your radio guy, you know, he tells you what to do, he tells you advice, all that stuff. Um, it's, pre it's a pretty cool chemistry between him and Snake. But pretty much the story starts with uh, these two... Are they immigrants? I don't know if they're considered immigrants, but basically um, their their country was uh, <clears throat> was attacked by this army or whatever. And they go to Big Boss to contract them to t figure out who this army is and get them out of, the, out of Costa Rica. So initially Big Boss is like, no, we're not just some violent merc group who's going to go kill everybody. Um, we need a reason or whatever. So then you end up finding out like it's actually the CIA, and they're 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 bringing all this like high tech shit down there, trying to do stuff, and you end up figuring out that they're developing a nuclear weapon similar to uh, Metal Gear, and uh, you gotta go put a stop to this. Um, the story is pretty basic, but it's it's classic Metal Gear. It's it's good storytelling. Um, a lot of characters, a lot of unique characters. Um, not really any. Uh, twist or anything like that, but um, you do figure out boss. The boss might be alive. That's how. That's how you. How Snake gets hooked into this. They should play a cassette with her in it. It's pretty interesting, but you end up figuring out everything. It actually ties in the story very well with the other games. There's a bunch of uh, loose holes that they fill in, like who's Otakon's dad? He's in this game. Um, like I said, Miller's in this game. Uh, ch -ch -ch -ch. you get to see the development of Metal Gear, you get to see the funding of Metal Gear, and it, it, it really plays the role of Big Boss really well. Um, yeah, I don't know, the story's pretty good. Like I said, there's main ops and uh, side ops. M main ops are your main story missions, side ops are your, uh, basically little secondary missions where you can play a snake, but really they're supposed to be missions for the mercs that you've been hiring. So, um, you can play as your mercs or you can play a snake. You level them up by doing side ops and stuff like that. It's pretty cool. Um, I'm gonna, I'm gonna prove the story though. It's, it's another good entry in the Metal Gear series. Alright, let's get started with gameplay next. Um, alright, so, unlike the other Metal Gears, this actually, it takes place from a hub. Uh, from the hub you have access to the main missions, the side missions. Um, and since you are a merc leader, you can recruit from here, which by recruiting you basically do a little one-on-one -on -one CQC match with them, which is 
little easy, honestly. Um, really, all you have to do is run up to them, grab them, choke them until they pass out, and you win the fight. They get put into your army. That's not the only way to recruit, but I'll get into that. Um, so yeah, you have recruiting. From there, you can uh, you can assign your recruitees to different portions of your oil rig, such as put them on research and development. You'll be able to build more weapons. Put them over on cook duty or whatever the uh, the lunch hall or whatever. The more the more food, like you have a percentage meter for how much food you have. The more food, the better off everybody's gonna be. Uh, I think it actually it doesn't double their stats, but it does increase their stats a little bit. So the more food, the better for them. Uh, you have like a sick bay, which the higher level that is, the more like the faster they heal if they get wounded in combat. Um, you can actually trade with other players on Peace Walker, which is a really cool feature. Um, I never actually got to use it, but um, from what I understand, you can trade like different items. You can trade your recruities to other people for other recruities. Uh, I'm not sure how far that goes. Like, m could I trade one of my high-level characters over to my friend, or what? I don't really know, but it's a really interesting idea. We've got that. We've got. Um, is that it? Yeah, um, well, I'll get into the biggest part of it now, though. You actually have this thing called Outer Heaven, right? So, Outer Heaven is your base name. But you have these special missions called Outer Ops, which is... It's kind of, um... Hmm. If you've played Assassin's Creed, it's similar to how you have one of those little assassin birdhouses where you can call your assassins over to, like... Send them to England. They'll go. They'll go to England and do an assassination target. It's basically like little mini missions that you can queue up for your your mercenaries to go on while you're doing either side ops or main missions. So what happens is they come back with experience and more money, and they also have the chance of recruiting other people or picking up items that you can only get in that mode. So. There's a, there's a total of probably over a hundred of these outer op missions, and uh, if once okay like let's say um, let's say you assemble Team Charlie. Team Charlie can have eight members. You you let's say you put all of your best members on Team Charlie. Once they go to outer ops, like let's let's, let's say you put them on uh, a basic infantry killing mission. You've got eight of your guys fighting six of their infantry. Um, when you win that match, like I said, you'll get money and all that. But you can actually replay it like a, um, it looks like a turn-based card game, really. Uh, it'll say like, your guy uses M16 to deal a thousand damage. It's their turn. He, he uses a shotgun to do six thousand damage to one of your guys. Um, they switch it around like that. And during these outer ops, they can die, they can get hurt, they can kill everybody without getting hurt, they'll level up more. Um, you don't you don't just use your mercenaries. You can actually use the vehicles you obtain in the story mode. So like, let's say you captured a helicopter. You could actually put your helicopter into your outer ops squad, and then it could, since it's a helicopter, it's gonna do a lot more damage to more. Like, if you're fighting an APC, it'll kill the APC faster. It can kill infantry really fast. As a lot of HP compared to your humans who are just walking around. It's it's very it's very deep. Um, and especially later on, once you start unlocking uh, Metal Gear, for example. Yeah, <laughs> you go take Metal Gear into battle. And let's just say he kills everything. Pretty much instantly. But, it's it's very cool. But, going into like the main and side missions of the game, they're, they're pretty basic, really. Uh, from, from your base, you pick the mission. So, let's say you go to side ops, alright? Um, let's say you pick um, Fulton Recovery. Alright. So in Fulton Recovery, you have five minutes to re recover each of the targets, right? Well, Fulton Air, re air Recovery, though, is it's a parachute that you attach to them. They'll go flying up into the air, and then you capture them. So it's it's kind of similar to the VR missions. It's basically like a little mini objective in a little mini area you have to do. Um, the areas are very small, and you complete this, you get a score rank D through S, I believe. Um... And it's also time attack too, so you, you basically have to do it really fast, really efficiently, no detections, no kills. You can tranquilize, but you, you gotta try to get the perfect score. 
Because if you get an S rank on certain missions, you'll get really good rewards. Like schematics for specific weapons that are really good, like stealth camouflage, the bandana which gives you infinite ammo, things like that. Um, same with the story mode, it's very small areas with pretty miniature objectives. Like some of these story missions you can beat within like 5 minutes, some, some of the bigger ones taking up to 20 minutes. Especially the boss fights. The boss fights in this game, you don't you don't fight bosses in the sense of the old ones where I'm Psycho Mantis or um, Fat Man like the roller skate and bomb guy. Um, you fight robots because this is the era of robots and AI. And uh, y y there's probably a total of ten bosses throughout the game, something like that, maybe more. I know in side ops, once you beat a boss, you actually unlock a second form of the boss to fight. So it's kind of cool that way. But once you kill it, you get its parts, which you can use to build metal gear. It's 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 a cool process. Um, I did find that the difficulty spike with the bosses was pretty erratic, though. Um, mainly once I got the Peace Walker. If, if I didn't have, like, a level 3 bazooka, I would, like, do no damage to him. At least not enough to stop him before he launches a nuke. But, the gameplay is still really fun. It may not be like the old ones, but it's, it's a really different experience, and it's really fun overall. So, I'm gonna approve of gameplay. I think I covered everything in there. Um, as for sound, it's it's typical Metal Gear soundtrack. It fits the era that it's in, such as Metal Gear Solid 3. Um, it's it's really good. Uh, the sound effects are really good. They are mostly used from Metal Gear Solid 3 over to this one. And voice acting is again top notch. We've got David Hayter, Tara Strong, Christopher Randolph, Yuri Lowenthal, Troy Baker, Steven Bloom. The list goes on. Uh, there's basically a shitload of really good voice actors. Um, if you've liked past Metal Gear voice acting, you're gonna like this one. There's no doubt about it. So I'm gonna approve of gameplay and sound. As for likes and dislikes, nothing really major. Um, overall though, it's a really fun game. I had a lot of fun with it. It does get a little repetitive, but it's it's pretty much fun. And on top of that, you have co-op. You can play almost every mission in this game in co-op. So, there is a lot to do. The, re the replayability in this game is crazy. Um, but yeah, story's good. Um, it's typical Metal Gear, so if, you, if you're a fan of the Metal Gear series, it's essential to play this one. It explains a lot. And it's a good experience. The gameplay is very different, which I think it's cool. It adds a lot to the series that we've never seen before. Plus it just builds on the big boss's character. You know, we know him as this legendary guy who has an army and he built a, a, a robot mech that can shoot nukes, so... It's cool to see how he was able to pull this off. And his his overall goal is just, it's very nice. Um, sound is very good, like I mentioned. It's It fits the series perfectly. But overall though, I'd say it's definitely worth a buy, especially on the HD collection.